Okay, so starting out with our cherry composition, we want to decide, um, because I'm gonna be working with a rectangular shape, where to add, and I said that I'm gonna do mine in this horizontal orientation, meaning that I'm gonna add some to both sides. Now, if you're working on a square orientation, that's perfect. You won't have much else to do, but I just thought this would be a really good composition to go horizontal. Now, also could go, you know, vertical and just make it longer. It doesn't really matter. I'm just turning it into a rectangle composition. So I'm going to end up drawing those lines on my panel to indicate where the square is. And then the very first thing that I want to do whenever there's a horizon line or a tabletop or whatever is I want to draw that, that line straight across. So, I mean, I've got that moving right across where I identify where my um, space is. And then I always measure this segment. So this segment, we'll just call it X, but we wanna see like, how does that place in there? It's not a third, but it very easily could be uh, two and a half. So what I mean by that is if I were to take a brush and measure this segment and I say, okay, there's one, okay, and there's one, two and a half, right? So I know that when I'm going on my panel, I can put a guess mark and then I can just double it and make sure that it's two and a half up, okay? And then once I get that um, mark down, I'll draw it all the way across and that's gonna be my horizon line, et cetera. Then I can identify how much higher these cherries come on board, right? There's three very distinctive shapes, but everything's pretty much below that horizon line as far as the shape of the cherries go. So I can treat each one individually. This one looks like it's got more of a flat top and good old Carol Marine, she just happens to be really angular. So you can see these uh, modules that are on here for the cherries where she kind of goes around and creates an almost, it's almost like a stop sign shape. Um, or you could just gesture the shape around, it doesn't matter. But I wanna try and indicate how um, much space is between the bottom and the top here. And so I can take that measurement and I can compare that to something else as well if I want. And I'm gonna take from the bottom of the cherry to the bottom of the substrate and I'm just gonna see, oh wow, look, it's the width of all three cherries. So that's helpful. So when I take the space here and determine what that's gonna be, I can just go across knowing that these two cherries actually touch slightly, which I think makes an interesting composition. Um, and then I'm also noticing that the top of this cherry comes up and above, right? So that it, it's, it, there's a, a lot of it that is above the horizon line. And then it touches the side, so that way I could just build off of that to put my other circular shape. And then I'll have my three cherry shapes across the top. Then I'm also gonna go in and draw the ellipses for the shadow shapes. Again, these are gonna touch. Okay, and then I can start doing the cross lines for my stems. And when I draw stems, I'm, I'm not gonna do this background at all. I'm gonna draw the stems first. That way, if these get really heavy, um, the lines get heavy, then I can always cut it away with background. Now, this stem almost touches the top and it's just a little bit to the off center. If I was to draw a mark here to indicate halfway on the canvas, it's really easy for me to determine how much of the stem comes on that side. And then I can just curve the line down. Then I know that this um, stem crosses that and goes over. And I could measure the distance between the top of the cherry and the stem here. And I'd wager that it's the exact same as this shape right here in the corner. Meaning that if I took my brush and I measured from the shadow down to the bottom of the canvas and I measure from the stem to the top of the cherry, they're the exact same width. And so that helps me keep the distances equal here. Um, and then if I was to turn that sideways, it's the same distance between this stem and this stem. So let's just call this A. This segment is A. This segment is A. And this segment is A. And that's what I mean by vertical and horizontal measurements. This line is vertical. This line is vertical. This line is horizontal. But once you determine some measurements, you can turn your brush, you know, long ways and sideways. And that's why you'll see the artists that they're holding their brush out and they're turning it a lot of times. They're measuring and comparing vertical measurements to horizontal measurements using their brush. And then we can just angle that um, stem down so that it touches the top. 
once we have that, we can break the inner cherries down into planes, but we'll do that with color um, so that we don't have to do any more guesswork with it. Um, let's see, I was going to say something else about uh, measurement. It escapes me now. Oh, the width of the cherry. We had said that the um, width of all three cherries was the distance between something. I can't remember what it was now. Maybe it was the bottom of the cherry to the shadow. So we'll redetermine it again in a second. But let's get drawing. I'm going to move that aside. I have my template there, and, and that kind of shows me. I mean, I think that these transparencies are kind of um, irrelevant, but if I look at that, it already looks like a nice little sketched out drawing. So it's like, okay, that's interesting to know. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily understand that to be cherries if I just saw it, but it's great to let me know how the shapes are um, kind of laid down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the um, image over here and try and fit the image and the palette here so that you can see everything. There we go. And then I'm just going to leave my paper towel out of view because it's not really relevant right now. And I'm just using, again, uh, my same two brushes. I'm going to use my number six um, silver bristle on flat, which is just my longer uh, rectangle with the long bristles. And then I'm going to use my number two silver bristle on bright. Okay, and it's got the, the shorter rectangle bristles on it. I got my water cup here and I got my paper towel. So the ochre itself will probably act as enough to draw with and I can pull the ochre out into a watery mixture. My colors here, um, I just had this yellow left over but I may or may not even use it. But I'm going to use this titanium white, I'm going to use this yellow ochre, uh, um, naphthol crimson, and I'm going to use um, the phthalo blue, and I'm going to use the bone black. Okay, so um, the naphthol the crimson or the cad cad red uh, light. Um, the pyrrole red has a little bit too much of an opaque white in it, so um, I chose not to use that because I don't want it to be opaque. And then these other two colors were extra from a color mixing thing that I just did. So I'm going to pull some of the ochre over, and I'm also going to grab some of the black. And I'm just going to mix up these colors. So I've got ochre and black, and it's just a little bit darker so that I can actually see my line. Now I'm remembering my first set of instructions that I'm supposed to determine where um, the two and a half mark is. So I'm going to just start by guessing, you know, it's not quite a third. So I'm going to put a mark and then I'm going to measure it. And what the way I'm going to measure it is I'm going to put the top of the brush at the mark that I made and I'm going to move my finger to the bottom and I'm going to come up with a segment. And that's one. And then I'm just going to calculate there's two and there's a half. So actually that was pretty good guesswork. And so it ended up being two and a half. So now all I've got to do is just drag my line all the way across in a straight line. And that's my tabletop. Remembering my, my drawing and my tabletop here. Okay. So once I have the tabletop, then I determined that the um, first cherry the top of the cherry was pretty much um, level with the top. It just comes a little bit above it, but I also wanted to determine um, how far in to go to get that cherry um, to start. And I don't think that I took a measurement there on the side, so I can just place it as an eastern boundary and just determine how far I want to go in. Now I'm remembering that I added my square, so I need to make this a square first so that I don't have to recalculate any boundaries. So what I'm going to do is just draw two lines. That's probably a little bit too far over. Okay, so this becomes my square. So anything beyond this is just fictional background that I'm going to make up. So the difference would be if I had just come over from the side and started my cherry, then my cherries would have been stretched out. They would have been really wide. Um, but if I start here as though this were the end of my image, then I can come over and just put the cherry here. And I said the top was pretty level, so I'm just going to go straight across. And I'm just going to come down. And then I'm going to put a mark for the width of the other cherry, because I said all three cherries um, were the same width across. So if I'm guessing this width, then I've got that, and I've got room for one more, and I've got room for one more. And that's going to help me to go all the way across. I'm 
just mix it in a little bit of dark. I don't want this to be too dark. So there's my mark for my second cherry. I'm leaving a little bit of that gap in between them. And then these cherries are touching. So I'm gonna put that third cherry there. And then I'm leaving a little bit of space between the end. This was my real mark. And that gives me the distance I need between the end there. All right. Now these cherries protruded up a little bit so I could follow my angles and just go up, over, and down. And then this goes up, over, and down. And they're touching. And then I can do the rest of the cherry going below the line so that I can just follow around creating the circle. And I'm looking at the negative space, meaning this triangle that's created of the negative space between the cherries, and that's gonna be really helpful for me. I'm looking at how angular her round objects are and how she just, boom, boom. And then I'm leaving the spacing in between that by going down and over and around and over and down. And then I've got some ideals for the cherry. Now I did put this a little bit too close so I can break that aside with background when I want, um, when I go to do the background in there. And then I can just shift this over. I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. Okay, then I'm gonna create the shadow shapes. And we had talked about uh, bringing those down and around as an ellipses. So again, I can make them angular, but I'm just trying to fill in the shapes. This comes down and around. And this comes down and around. Okay, and then I measured from the bottom of the shadow to the bottom of the um, substrate, and that is what gave me the height between the top of this cherry and the beginning of that stem that's curved over. Okay, so I'm going to mark that first. I'm marking from the bottom of the shadow to the uh, bottom of the canvas, and I'm going to get a measurement. And then I'm using that same measurement to say, okay, the stem should be right there. So I'm just putting a little mark and that's how high the stem should come. Now I see that if I was to draw a straight line from the stem here down in between, it would go right into the um, pinnacle of that triangle that's in between. Now, of course, my triangle's kind of uh, bowed up a little bit, but I know that this stem would still come over a little bit, so it would be halfway. And then I can just trace it straight into the cherry so that I have my first stem. Now I want to put my second stem and I'm remembering also that I said, hey, if there was a half line here that the, the curve of this stem goes beyond and it doesn't quite touch the top. So I know that the top of my stem is going to be a little bit to the right of halfway and then it's got a curve around. So basically all I have to do is just connect the dot, right? Connect the dot. So I'm just going to go down and around, down and around. You get as many times as you want to do that because you can conceal it with background if you don't like it. So down and around, down and around. Now, I also said the distance between the shadow and the bottom of the canvas was the, the same distance horizontally as this stem to the other stem. So that tells me that the curvature of this stem is going to be about right here where my finger is. And I see that this is kind of on a curve. So it curves out and then back into the cherry. So I can decide where I want it to stop. And if I was to draw a straight line over from this top stem, you see how this 
stem is lower than this top stem. So I want this stem to be lower than the top stem. So it's probably going to stop somewhere around right here. And then I can just go over and down, over and down. And then I've got my three stems on the cherry. And then the only cherry I'm not real crazy about is this one. It looks like it kind of got smashed on the side. This one, this is the one that somebody tried to pick up at a grocery store and eat without paying for, and they got caught. <laughs> and so they squished it, threw it back down. <laughs> so I'm going to try and taper it in just a little bit. So I can round it out and I like it a little bit more. Okay, so I might plump this other one a, a little bit out too. That's what I'm mainly seeing is this red could come out. I'm trying to compare the three shapes between the two. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Yeah, that makes all the difference in the world. All right, so now it's time for Balakian. Now what I'm going to do special, this is special for this one, is that I'm going to go ahead and put my darks in the stems and the shadows before I block in. Because the stems and the shadows are really just dirty background that she left. Um, and I don't want to have to redo it because I want them to look nice and crisp. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of a darker color with my black and my ochre. And I'm going to try and put a thicker you know, right where the stem was plucked off, I'm gonna put that little thick piece and it's darker on the left side if you look at it. And then I see that there's just a little bit of a light, um, a little bit of a dark piece coming down. And it's okay if it's thicker because we're gonna thin it out with background. But I'm trying to use my um, number two flat here and I'm trying to wipe as much paint as I can so I can keep it nice and slick. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to make a wider, darker space for the cherry. And the same thing here. I see a little triangle. I'm just going to kind of put it in with the corner of my brush. And then I see that this part of the stem is dark. So I want to make sure that I put that in there. I don't really see that much more of the stems are dark. So I'm going to let that be. And then I'm going to come down and do the bottom parts of the cherries, known as the umbras and the pre-umbras. That's the darkest parts of the shadow. And if you look, you'll see there's like a really dark, dark piece that is like a cast shadow from the cherries. And so I'm going to put a dark outline on the bottom of the cherries. And then I'm going to put a dark shadow underneath. I'm going to do the same thing here. And the same thing down here. Same thing here.
And I see just a little bit of dark on the top of the cherry. And then also on the top of this cherry. So I went ahead and put those in as well. And it's just really darkening and redefining my shape so that I can get the darks in, but also uh, appreciate what I've got as far as the background goes. And next I want to start my block in with my cherries. So I'm moving to my big number six brush. And I'm going to pull a little bit of this um, cad red out. And I'm going to add the smallest, smallest, smallest touch of the blue to it. This is a phthalo, it could be an ultramarine, it doesn't matter. But if it's phthalo, it's gotta be even less because it's such a powerful color. But it doesn't matter, either color will give you this burgundy color. And I'm gonna start just by putting some simple swipes, just enough to kind of start to block in the cherry. I understand that I'm gonna see some transparency and I'm gonna see that glowing neon red that I put underneath there. And I'm okay with that. And I'm putting that one down. And I'm also putting that down. Mix some more. I mixed it way too dark. Okay, that way I've got a base layer for my cherries. And then I'm cleaning off my brush. And I'm gonna go in and acknowledge my tabletop. And so again, whether you're using blue or phthalo, I think this is phthalo by default. I'm going to use a little bit of blue and white. And this is phthalo, so let me show you how to. I'm just going to dull it down with a little bit of red. The complement is orange, but the shortcut is red. No rules break the rules. And then once I get that color mixed up, I'm just going to put some white in there to lighten it up. And I want the darkest color first because this isn't the only application to the background that I'm going to put. Um, and I don't want to cover up all of my background color. So I want to just kind of keep the layer nice and loose. It's got a lot of white to it, so it's going to conceal some stuff. So I just really want to be mindful not to go, you know, crazy with it. All I'm trying to do, this is kind of a negative painting technique. And when you have bright colors under there, it tends to help you to uh, see the shapes more by removing some of the color around it because our brains respond in a reductive fashion. And so we're just trying to put enough to double check our drawing. If we put too much, then not only will we lose the background color that we worked so hard to put on there, but also um, it'll look more masked in than we uh, intended. I'm going to turn the brush sideways slightly to get this little groove in between.
I'm just working right up to my shadows, but not covering them. It's okay if I get a little bit on my cherries because I'm not done painting them either. Just a real dirty blue layer. And for me personally, I'm going to cover up some of the shadow too. You may not have to go back and do that step, but I'm just pulling a little bit of this down. And for the background, I'm just mixing the ochre and the black, but it's a higher proportion of ochre. We had that combination from the get-go, but this is just a black and ochre uh, proportion that's done in there. And I need to be careful because A, again, I want to see my background shine through, but B, I don't want to... I don't want to be scared to tap into my stems, but I don't want to paint over them to where I lose them either. That's why I put the dark down to kind of mark their place so that I can smudge some of this in there and be a little bit more free with it. And I like the rigidity of the panel that I have. It's the ampersand gesso board. It retains the strokes, but also, you know, it's just easy to get a smooth, clean coverage on it. So as long as I can still see those stems, I'm good. Remember, this is just the dirty block in to determine whether we like our drawing, whether we need to make any changes or anything. So I'm um, continuing and I've got all my stems visible, my cherries are visible, brightening up. And what I want to do is uh, typically I work back to front but I want to work on the cherries so that way if there's any, um, you know, overlap, then we can let push the backgrounds right up to them. We've got enough of a block in that we can allow the rest of the imagery to come up around it. So um, what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with my flat brush, my number six. And <clears throat> I can just take it and... I'm gonna move in with some reds and I'm gonna put a second coat. Some of it is a little bit see-through, so I'm just trying to mix up a little bit more of my um, crimson here. Move this image over. So I'm just gonna mix up some of my red and some of my blue. You get a nice deep crimson. The problem with these colors is that both of them are transparent. So when you put them down, they're not layering or laying um, thick on top of the painting. So sometimes they'll take multiple layers to really get a deep coat through. I don't necessarily need to cover everything, but I do want to um, put enough down to where it conceals the color underneath. So I can leave some of these spots open where I see the lighter red, or I can paint them in. Doesn't really matter. I want to make sure that all of the things that I see dark are translating into dark. There's definitely not as much dark on this middle cherry, but I am going to put a secondary layer down here toward the bottom, even if it does get covered up again, just so that I have a little bit more um, of a light differentiation. And I'm going to put a little bit here at the top just to make it more solidified. And then it's just the red and blue combo. And 
Oh my God. So now we live on this side. So I've got a nice dark block in for all three cherries. Next, I'm just going to increase my proportions of red into the mixture. And I'm going to go back and lay in some of the lighter, brighter sections. And you can do this with a smaller brush if you want the strokes to be more intentional so that it looks more painterly. So I'll pick up my small number two brush and do this. Now the red is transparent, so if you want it to really stand out, you're gonna to have to add a touch of white to it, but it's gotta be the smallest touch, otherwise it's gonna get really pasty and look like Pepto pink. So I'm just gonna put in the littlest bit of white to help make it stick. In this middle cherry, for sure, there's a lot of bright. But if you just stick down red, it'll look good. And then five minutes later, it'll be gone because it's not going to show up over this dark color. So you've got to add just the smallest touch of white to make it stick. So I'm putting the center of that cherry. Here's that little highlight right where the stem is coming out. So we'll highlight back here. And then a little highlight on that third cherry, just to brighten it up slow. You don't want to work too fast. I don't want to work too fast. and a little bit more white. It's not the white of the gleam, it's the white that I'm gonna let dry so that the red shows up even brighter. I'm putting a second coat here because this red's already dried transparent. But you see how much more it shows up now? Just with that little bit of white in it. Doesn't look chalky, but at least it's showing up. And the red that I had laid down right before it had already kind of dried and disappeared. I'll just fade it down into the bottom. And I'm just following the brighter red patterns and the cherries. 
tickling those edges to make it not so sharp. Okay, and I'm not going to finish out the cherries. I just want to start creating that little bit of division of light. And once I have that set, I'm going to move into the stems. I just wanted enough so I could catch a little bit of light on the stems. Now, I told you before that um, I didn't intend to have this bright yellow on the palette. It was just there from something else I was doing. So I'm going to try not to use it. I'm going to just use the ochre that I have and the white and create a light yellow out of that. Maybe just a small tap of my blue to make it look more green. So this is ochre, white, and a little bit of my blue. And I'm going to wipe my brush flat. You see how I'm wiping all the excess paint off of it? Because I want it to be thin and crisp. Let's see if I can get it. See how thin that brush is? It's not puffing out at all. And it's just got the paint on the edge of it. And I'm holding it down at an angle so that it just goes down flat. And I'm just going to put the highlight of the stem as I trace my line down. And remember, I have the margin for it to be too wide. If it's too wide, it's not a big deal because I have the uh, margin of error where I can go back with background. But the main thing is, is that I wipe all this excess paint off because if there's too much on there, then the line for sure is going to be too wide and then I'm going to have to go back and offset it. But I'm just highlighting the stem and you can dig back into that pile but just every time wipe it off so it's nice and clean and smooth. And we're going to do each one of the cherry stems in this way. A little bit of highlight and then drag it on. And for this stem, the whole thing isn't visible, so I'm just going to do part of it. some second coats on some just to brighten it up a little bit. And then with those stems in place, I can mix up some more background color with the ochre and the black. And just because I have this yellow here, I'm just going to mix it up because I already talked about how you can mix your own ochre. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use what's here. You can just use plain ochre. Just kind of mixing up some. So that's ochre and black. 
and then just give yourself a second application with the background. Maybe just add a touch of white to make it kind of chalky. And this is your chance to be able to correct if your stem for some reason came out, you know, a little bit more broad than what you wanted. You can use background to conceal it, but you just don't want your tone to be, you know, the stems disappear somewhat, but like right here, the stem's not visible, but there's a patch of light and dark connecting it. So I want some of my hot pink to still show through. So I'm just putting some real intentional strokes here. Mixing up a little bit more ochre. Touch of black. Now your open time of your acrylic only has, you know, a little bit of time before it starts to dry. Otherwise you're going to end up snatching up the color underneath it. So you got to work kind of quick. But here there's enough of the colors uh, blended in that it makes a difference. And I'm just adding a little bit of white for some extra opacity. And I'm going to wet my brush so that it stays nice and fluid. And I'm just going to drag some white tones through here without hopefully pulling up too much of this paint. If you see that your surface is too fragile, then just let it set. And you can come back and hit it again later. It's not a big deal. 
better than having to go back and match the color and patch the hole. I'm patching this hole, but mixing on the canvas as well. So it's not an easy job. <laughs> Once you get your background set up and you like it, it's pretty evenly distributed. I see I still got some holes here. Patch that up. Then you can move down to your ground floor, tabletop. And I'm gonna do the same thing, taking my yellow and my blue and I'm remembering that I neutralized this blue and I'm noticing that the white comes more toward the front of the table so I'm going to start at the lower section and put some brighter blue across the bottom And then as I move further back, I'm going to get a little bit uh, lower in value. But I want to put some just really strong highlights here. And I don't want to blend them all in. I just want to let some of them stand out.
Maybe use my small brush in between here so I can get a little bit more control. And I'm just really going to bleach this bottom part of the table out. Oops, I hope I did it in the camera again. Oops. Now we have a nice soft transition. It's got some energy. I don't want too hard a line. So like right here, I see that this one's a little bit too hard. So I'm just going to use my brush and soften it out a little bit. Don't want the eye in too much. Maybe down there too. Same thing. And then I want to take my shadows. I'm going to take a little bit more of the ochre and black mixture and just maybe give my shadows another, you know, tap in some areas. I want some of that bright color to show out, but I'm just going to clean them up a little bit so that I don't have any of that blue overlapping if I do. And then I'll go back with a really dark black and again just put that pre-umbra like a little negative sign just right underneath the um, cherry and then a little bit more black on the bottom of the cherry just to really make it stand out And then I'm seeing some of the background mixture on the cherries. I don't know if you see it but there and there. There's like some of that dirty background color. I want to just go and acknowledge that it's reflecting the colors around it, which things often do. And I'm going to come back in with a little bit more red. And I'm going to take the smallest tap of white. I really want to brighten some of these.
I don't want any of my um, colors to look too modular. So, I mean, I've always got to like overlap slightly to get things to blend so they don't look like they're so, um, I mean, she's got definitely some strokes going on, but I'm just going to overlap with a little regular red so it doesn't look just like a light shape smacked on top of a dark shape. The red will help transition and marry the values a little bit more effectively. And then if my background is dry to the touch, which it is, I'm going to embellish it a little bit lighter with some ochre just so that I can get some differentiation. Um, mine looks a little bit on the green side. I'm going to get a little bit more of a ochre and I add a small touch of white in there with it. I don't want to distract from the cherry stems. It's a little bit too much white. But I do want to create a little bit lighter value. So I'm just going to brush some of it in there. I'm just reminding myself that if I manipulate this too much while it's wet, that I'll end up pulling up the layers beneath it. But just want to add a little bit of light. So I'm depositing it in all the places first. And then once I have it on there, I'm going to just clean my brush off so that it's dry and um, no paint on it. And I'm just going to feather in some of that light color. And the main thing I'm trying to create is just a little bit more depth with it. I don't want it to look like um, one solid color. So I mean, I want some, a little bit of light, and a little bit of dark in there. Slowly add a little bit of white, the same way I did at the table. So I'll just have a little bit of a light shining through. A little bit different than what she's got in hers. And then just keep applying so that you can lighten your direction of light. I'm just going to kind of do a little diagonal across the cherries here. And you see how I'm just kind of feathering it. Like machine gun technology. I like that a little bit better. It kind of breaks it up. 
it's not just all one color. And then the only thing I have left to do is I want to create the highlights. And in order to make them not look so fake and pasted on, I'm going to start by mixing it with a little bit of red so that I get like this off-center highlight. It's not white at all, but kind of like a soft pink. I'm just using my number two brush to put a little mark down. Turn it sideways for this one. Okay. And then I can just go back with straight up white and just put it off center just a little bit so the whole thing isn't repeated, but just a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same thing on my stems. I'm going to brighten them just in a couple of places. Again, it's a dirty white, so it's almost pure white, but it's just got some of the other colors mixed in with it. And I'm going to put a little bit here. And I'm going to put a little bit here. And I'm going to put a little bit more here. And I don't know, that might be it. I don't think I want to make this one brighter, but I'm going to add a little bit more to it. And if my reds dry and they dry a little bit um, deeper, I can put some more. This is the pyrrole red that I talked about, and it is a really bright, opaque red. And so look at what happens when I put a little bit of it down in comparison. See how bright that is? It's just really intense. So, I mean, the good thing is, is that you can kind of embellish with it. It's a lot more brighter than your um, red that we were using, but it also has a lot of opaque tendencies. So um, when you're mixing it with other colors, sometimes it'll make your colors muddy. But for sure, it just gives you a little bit more brightness. Mm. I'm just tickling a little bit of it in here. And then just push your you know, lights lighter and your darks darker. If I wanted to add a little bit more um, ochre, I could, but you know, I like this the way it is. They're nice and dramatic and intense. 